Oh man, so Bitcoin dips below 23,000, continuing its attempts to break through 24,000 and try to sustain this relief rally, which many people have been calling for. Yesterday, we had a bunch of positive economic earnings, but today I've noticed some on-chain metrics which paint a particularly worrying picture about this potential relief rally. Now, you're going to be shocked by what I've found, and we're going to go through it step by step. First, as you can see, guys, the price is still sitting under 23,000. If I just switch over to this chart, you will see that we're still struggling to break through that top yellow line here, which is 24,000. That's a 24,000 level. We've been rejected twice now. We've created our higher low, it appears here with yesterday's candle. But look what happened yesterday. Strong day, intraday, but look at the wick pushing us to the downside as later in the day, the bears came back into control and pushed us down. I mean, the day was as high uh, yesterday as uh, the the 23,200 level uh, now being pushed back below 23,000. So a little bit of control by the bears and we just need to see how do we open up today. Okay, now very quickly, what is the fear and greed index showing? Let's take a quick look. Sitting at 30, you can see the pre-market in the US is pretty flat today. 0 0.07 on the Dow, uh, S&P completely flat and the NASDAQ flat after a decent uh, rally yesterday. Now, what was the reason for the rally yesterday? We saw that we had better ISM numbers and the market was feeling better about the economy economy and Fed Bullard, who's normally very hawkish, came out and said labor market's looking good. We are not in a recession, right? So the markets decided to take a rally uh, yesterday. We're also going to get uh, Fed um, uh, official Mester speaking today, so we'll listen out for that. But also tomorrow, we get the really important non-farm payrolls, okay? Today, we get some uh, weakless uh, jobless claims, and tomorrow, the non-farm payrolls, which we're looking for, which are very, very important. Remember, the economy needs to see that is the labor market continuing to be strong or are there any chinks in the armor that it's tumbling too fast, i.e. we're heading into a real recession. So the markets will be paying a lot of attention to that. By the way, guys, as you're noticing, I'm not in my normal setup today here to give you a quick update. Nonetheless, make sure you smash up the like button and subscribe if you appreciate that. Quick update on the Solana issue, which I brought to you yesterday before we look at the on-chain metrics. And uh, they seem to have found that the exploit was coming from some slope wallets. Uh, so apparently $6 million has been exploited so far which obviously is horrible to anybody affected, but in the great scheme of things, when No Man Bridge got hacked for about 200 million just the day before, uh, it, it could have been much worse. That's a better way to put it. Um, apparently, it's to do with slope wallets and some third parties, which are uh, which stored the private keys on a centralized server. All not great stuff, really. And just a reminder for all of us, because even I get lazy sometimes and, and leave crypto on, a, on even a software wallet, right? I mean, the worst is keeping it on a centralized exchange, but then to keep it on a, a, a slope wallet or a phantom wallet or a trust or trust wallets and these kind of wallets, like you normally think they're quite safe, but obviously just a reminder for all of us that even a hardware wallet is literally the, the only safest place is physically in our hands, okay? So hopefully you guys can heed that. Now, let's come on to the crux of it because we've been calling for this rallying cry, right? We've been calling for this relief rally. We're going to get this relief rally and lots of people have been getting really excited that crypto can run back to all-time highs, run back into the 50s and 60s and 69. And I've always called for, look, the relief rally from the technical perspective is always showing me that we're possible to run up to 28, 29, 30 kind of range, right? We're running into your weekly EMA, and then I'm expecting some pushback from the bears. That's what the technicals have always shown me. But now we're going to look at to see what picture on-chain metrics are saying, because if all these people are suddenly getting really bullish, and by the way, I'm in the market. It's not like I'm not in the market, because like I've broken that video down here for you guys to go watch. I'm in the market right now. 85% of my crypto is in the market right now, ready for a move to the upside, because I don't want to risk it. Um, coming to the downside. But what I would do want to show you is the metrics are showing an interesting picture. And the first one I want to share with you is the number of active addresses. Now, if you look at this green area here, during a bull market, you get an influx of new demand, right? You can see that the orange line is following very fast in an upward trajectory along with the Bitcoin price as more demand comes into the market. Then you get this period of demand destruction as the price starts to fall and you can see that the number of active addresses tumbles significantly. Then in October to November period, you had another run up, but not as powerful. Do you notice that? Look at the addresses were not picking up as powerful as they did in this period, despite the price running up to 69,000. Now, I've covered this before with you guys. That run up in hindsight was very, very interesting because a lot of people at the time, I remember when we were making content around that period, when we fell in this period here, 
in the summer down to 20, 29,000 on Bitcoin. A lot of people thought this was the start of something called a super cycle. People kept talking about this super cycle. Are we going to just fall a little bit to 29 and then run up to 100, 150, right? So you almost got this. Uh, uh, what happened was in this period here on the second run up, you got a bunch of new holders coming in and the long term holders were simply sending to these new term holders. So it was almost like the long term holders knew that this was not going to last. and We were going to head into a bear market. And that's why you didn't see uh, the number of active addresses follow as they normally do in a proper bull market. So that would have been one of our clues at that period. And now what we're seeing is we continue to be in this low bear market demand profile. So until we see this trajectory start to change, until we start to see this kind of a situation here, that, this is not going to be an indication of a full massive move to the upside just yet. So that's the first thing we want to look at is the number of active addresses. And currently, they're not providing uh, indications of this huge relief rally, which a lot of people are calling for. The next thing we want to look at is your total transaction fees. And similarly, we continue to be in demand destruction. We've not seen any crazy peaks here suggesting that we can try to then move ourselves back up like we've seen these kind of volume areas where things start to, the profile starts to increase. We've not seen that. We continue to be in this demand destruction area here with total on-chain fees at around 13.4 Bitcoin a day. So it's still very low here on the transaction fee. Keeping things moving, we can then look at the mean block size. And uh, again, when the price starts to run up, you really start to see that the congestion in the blocks pick up. People utilize the full block spaces. OK, but but what you can see here is you're seeing that we still have partially empty blocks. There's very little congestion on the network. Again, we want to see this pick up if we're going to believe this notion that there's going to be this huge relief rally. We need to see that the, the congestion starts to pick up on the network. Remember, these are the on-chain metrics we need to look at. When we talk about you know, analyzing a stock price, if you're analyzing Apple, right, you want to see that if, if you're worried about their stock price, you want to see that they're selling iPhones. People are using iPhones, they're buying iPhones, they're buying MacBooks, they're buying the product. So with Bitcoin, if we expect the price to run up, we need to see addresses, we need to see transactions, we need to see the capacity and the congestion on the block sizes. Right now, we're not quite kind yet seeing that, which is making me feel that the price action is decoupled from that. It's focusing not on the on-chain metrics, it's focusing on the risk on move that is coming from the stock market. Very, very important because that can set up a relief rally while the stock market decides to relief rally. But it doesn't necessarily mean we're ready for our next bull run in the macro sense of the next bull run. OK, hopefully you guys are understanding that nuance. Moving on, we can look at the same on Ethereum and the number of transactions continue to be quite low. Right. We've not seen any uh, crazy uptick here, but we are seeing a potential here in the short term. We have seen that in relation to the price increase on Ethereum and Ethereum related projects in the short term, possibly around some of the excitement around E2.0. But again, not crazy right because if we look at the average gas used per block continues to be declining right continues to be declining um, at approximately 99 percent consumption gas per block okay so definitely something else for us to to watch here is we're not seeing crazy crazy uh use on the on-chain uh, analysis for bitcoin and ethereum now what does this mean so in essence what i'm seeing here is i continue to think there can be a relief rally right i still buy into the fact that bitcoin can if we go over to the weekly have a potential run and have a potential run even up to that kind of 30k level right that kind of ema ribbon that's your weekly ema we can run up into that ema ribbon and it would do so based on the fact that it's coupled with the stock market the stock market decides to rally decides to move to the upside and bitcoin can follow it but in order to believe and start getting into this notion that yep this is the next bull cycle now we've come out of the bear and we're into this proper bull market I need to see those on-chain metrics tick up. I need to see that active addresses go up. I need to see transaction fees go up. I need to see the block uh, utilization go up. OK, we need to see congestion on the networks. Um, and at the moment, we're not seeing those just yet. So I don't want us to get ahead of ourselves that this is massively going to run. We could still be in this kind of uh, definition of a bear market for a while. And anybody who's been for a bear market, they, they often last longer than you think, because that's the point of it. It's to, to really wash out those weak hands, get rid of those final people who are just hanging on. And I think just from a gut feeling, we still have quite a few of those um, weaker hands still about. Right. So until those guys kind of get washed out, I can't see us having a massive run. I can see us having a pressure release, right, like a pressure release up towards 30K, give some of the excitement back to the market because the the 
um, wider markets are rallying in terms of equities, I can see that. That's absolutely fine. But wh how, when do I buy into the fact that we're going to head up to 69,000, then 100K, 150K, when I see those on-chain metrics start to take shape? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you appreciate me giving you these updates in the dark, dingy hotel room. Make sure you let me know in the comments that you appreciate it, and I'll continue to give you guys these updates as and when it matters. Do check out Bybit and BitGet. Links in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.